the host of War Stories, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. All right, uh, uh, good evening, Colonel. It, it, here's my question. I mean, the last question that I asked the ambassador. I mean, what does America do now? I mean, on the one hand, we've got Tillerson saying we're still willing to negotiate. We hear today that there are back channels, and yet we've got the president saying, hey, we're locked and loaded and we're ready to defend this country and our territories. Well, look, uh, I, I agree completely with what John just said in terms of convincing President Xi and the People's Republic of China that it's in their interest to act now. Because unless Xi intervenes to stop Kim Jong-un, the United States is going to have to take preemptive military action against the regime in Pyongyang. And that's going to have catastrophic consequences, not just for North Korea, but for the People's Republic of China. Consider this, Judge. Up to 20% of the North Korean population, 25 million human beings, is likely to flee on foot across the Yalu and Tumen rivers right. and take to the sea like boat people from Vietnam. That is a disaster of extraordinary proportions for China. There are things the president needs to do in the time that we've got to convince Xi that we are deadly serious. Because talking to Kim Jong-un is a waste of time. It is a waste of time. But here's the and, thing. It's but, not as though the, the president hasn't explained to uh, uh, President Xi in China that, look, no. you're going to suffer and you're going to have a mass migration well, from the peninsula. But, but see, I, I don't think Xi is necessarily confident at this point that we are going to take action. Ooh. And what has to be done, there's a bunch of things that could be done. For example... Return the tactical newts to North Korea, excuse me, the Republic of Korea that we withdrew back in the 1990s. We can deploy another carrier strike group to the region. We've got the Reagan going back into port to rearm and give when, the guys a couple of days When is that going to be deployed? Well, she's, she's in a port in, in Japan. She can be back along the Korean coast and close enough to strike with air assets and all the rest of it. If we move some aircraft and more air tankers to Guam and Okinawa. These are clear signals to the Chinese that we are getting ready to act. How about this? Deploy search and rescue assets and even ask Z if we can base some of those search and re rescue assets in China to recover our air crews, that again, some of which will get shot but down. But if, but as you but say, wait, Colonel, wait, Colonel wait. hold on, but if, as you say, we take preemptive action and we strike first, China has said that they will, uh, if that occurs, that they will take the side of North Korea. Well, but what, this, is, this is, again, what my point. We are going to have to do this. We're facing a, a clear and present danger, an existential threat from the crazy regime in, in in, North, in Pyongyang. We face the same problem ultimately from Tehran. Now, you, we could, for example, just to make sure everybody understands we're serious, deploy the U.S. naval ship Mercy, the hospital ship from San Diego to Pusan, Korea. So it sends a big signal. It's very visible. Deploy mm -hmm. more U.S. Marine and Navy assets out to the region. Deploy more intelligence satellites and reconnaissance to update our target list. And that's going to leak here in this town. You know that. You could deliver biological and chemical protection equipment to the Republic of Korea. And finally, you could urge President, or excuse me, Japanese Prime Minister Abe to go to Beijing and tell the PRC President Xi, you'll go down in history as the man who talked us back from the brink. You'll get all the credit if you take Kim Jong-un back down. All right. Now, let me all, of those, all of those things have to be done before you start military action. And I, even I, I though there was a unanimous vote of the U.N. Security Council, yes, I, I yes. mean, that didn't seem to have any impact. Unanimous. Russia and China. But that's, because, that's because they're not seeing in Beijing, forget Pyongyang, they're not seeing in Beijing that we're deadly serious. And we mm -hmm. are. And there has to be. Because what's going to happen otherwise, a military operation is going to use sea and air assets, cruise missiles, Air Force strike aircraft, to literally decapitate the, the regime in Pyongyang, All take right. down the, their air defenses, their sea cube comms with cyber attacks and special weapons strikes that we can't talk about on TV. And if Kim survives all that, he's going to have to issue orders to launch things with carrier pigeons because they won't be able to talk to each other. Let me ask you one quick question. I only have a few seconds yeah. left. Uh, Seoul, South Korea. Everybody yep. knows, you know, if they strike us uh, or if we strike them, then they're going to strike uh, South Korea. Why yeah. are they resistant to the THAAD uh, uh, defense missile system? Well, are they would, like, don't I, they know what's going on? Well, I w because, again, nobody thinks we're serious. Because just as Ambassador Bolton said, for so many times there's been so much bluff and bluster. This is not a president that anybody ought to take anything but deadly serious.